guys, it's Cobra, and it is Thursday, which means it's another episode of Sega vs. Nintendo. Um, this is the third episode, and the first week we took a look at Doom, uh, the second week we took a look at Mortal Kombat 3, and for the third week we're going to go a bit of a different direction. We're going to go back in time a little bit and explore the 8-bit era with Double Dragon. Now, Double Dragon is synonymous almost, with um, good arcade games, and then it was ported to the uh, the NES, and it, it was a popular game, and for good reason, it's really good, um, but unbeknownst, unbeknownst to some people, due to the uh, lack of popularity of the Sega Master System in North America, most, a lot of people, including myself until I actually received a Master System, didn't know that Double Dragon was on the Master System, um, it is a port of the arcade game as well, um, and some people like it, some people don't. Some people like it more than the NES, some people don't. Um, so I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, we'll do two uh, little gameplay footages of maybe the first stage, and we'll see how the two stack up. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm going into this one almost 100% unbiased. You know, I'm usually... Uh, there's usually, I, usually when I play a game, I know there's one version that's slightly better, and that might, that might uh, weigh the... End concept doesn't mean I, you know, anything like anything bad per se. Um, but with this one, I've played this one a lot more, and I'm very un somewhat unfamiliar with this. Um, but it's not like I'm a big fan. You know what I mean? I like it, but I'm I'm not like going to defend it or anything like that. So I'm going in this very unbiased and almost uneducated on the two games. Um, so let's take a look at the. Uh, custom area, what we do is we usually take a look at the, uh, Nintendo version first. So let's take a look at Double Dragon on the NES. Alright guys, it's Battletoads on the NES, or, uh, <laughs> Battletoads, well, wow. It's Double Dragon on the NES. I think most people are fairly familiar with this game. It's very popular. A lot of people have it. Got some catchy music in it. Graphics, pretty good for the NES. Now, the problem, one problem the NES has is that because its controller only has two buttons, um, games like this sort of are odd in the fact that A is punch, B is kick, and if you press A and B at the same time, you jump. That can be somewhat awkward if you need to jump, you know, it's just, I can do it on command, but it can be awkward in a, in a, in a pinch. One cool thing is that you can, like, pick up weapons and use them, too. Music is really good. Alright, here we get to fight this, uh, gingerbread man. Ripped gingerbread man. Nice. Pretty solid game. Okay, guys, that's, uh, Double Dragon on the NES. You know, it's a classic. Um, for good reason. It's fun. Uh, beat em up. Arcades, uh, arcade game. Uh, which was ported over pretty well to the, uh, to the... Uh, NES right there. So, next let's take a look at the uh, 
the underdog a little bit. Um, the less popular double dragon for the master system. Um, in theory, it should be pretty close as the same game. And from what I understand, it actually the Sega Master System is actually slightly more powerful than the NES. Um, it just didn't have the game library to uh, compete. So um, I'm sort of interested to take a look at this one. I have played it before, but it's been a while. So uh, I'm f sort of going into it knowing that uh, I don't really know much about it. So let's give it a look, guys. Uh, it's Double Dragon on the Sega Master System. Alright, guys. It's Double Dragon on the Sega Master System. First thing I noticed, the music. Not nearly as good as the NES version. Whoa. Um, something else. Um, the health bar is much shorter. Wow. This game is much more difficult. And jumping is much tougher because the buttons are further apart. And like the NES, the Master System only has two buttons. And you have to press them both at the same time to, to jump. And it's very difficult. Wow, this game is much more difficult, and it doesn't control quite as well. Also, there was no uh, two-player option in the beginning, unless it was, uh, unless it's sort of like arcade style where the second player presses start and is automatically two player. Oh, already this guy? You know, I'll give this one thing. The backgrounds, though they are not as good as, uh, not as like graphically as good I suppose as the NES version um, it is bright it is brighter doesn't look bad I mean the bricks are well defined okay so there you have the master system version of Double Dragon and um after playing both both versions, I think it's pretty easy to come to a decision on this one. Um, there's just several things that you can't look past in a game, and I just feel, in the end, that the title actually definitely goes to the NES version. Nintendo wins this round, guys. Um, it's just the controls are better, the, the graphics are different, but they're not worse or anything, they're just kind of different. Um, and the sound is overall better. To be honest with you, there's really nothing about the, the 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 Master System version of the game that I liked more. There just wasn't anything there. I don't know what uh, I can't I can't think of a thing really. Um, it's not a bad version of the game for the Sega Master System, but if you have the NES version. I wouldn't really go for this one. I'd definitely go for the NES if you're trying to choose between two of them. Um, you know, it's just it's just overall a better game. Um, all right, guys, so that wraps up uh, this episode in which we went back to the 8-bit era. And uh, now that I have my Sega Master System fixed, we'll be able to do that a little bit more. So uh, until next Thursday, guys, this is Cobra, and thanks for watching.